Well, when we read the Bible, it says Paul waters and someone, um, some, yes, someone sowed the seed and someone else wat watered. So we are studying with this lady, Sister Muriel. Uh, we studied with Sister Margaret and Sister Muriel. And this morning she had to be picked up. And she was picked up and she's here. So I'm going to ask her to stand so we can give her a warm welcome. Sister Muriel. Good morning. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I am so glad to be here this morning. Um, I had a challenge this morning, early hours of the morning, as early as 4.15, when I got up to use the bathroom. I picked up my head, and it was pounding like we are using the hammer on it. And I said, hey. My family has Sabbath school today, and I have a headache this early hours of the morning. How will I make it? So I laid it down again, and I slept off. When it's time for prayer time, I picked it up again. It was also still hammering, and I was like, okay, Sister Mieta, I have a headache. And she prayed with me, and we closed the prayer section, and Sister Grace called me. And she prayed also. And she called the, third, the second time, and I didn't pick up the second time. I said, oh, no, I need not to listen to the, the voice now. I need just to see if I can catch up maybe a little more sleep, and the head will clear up. So while her phone was ringing, I was ministering a prayer. I said, God. You know that I will be here this morning, and, and I need to be early. Help me not to miss this Habasco. When I, it looked like I, I was called up, I woke up to look at the time. It was 8.16. 8.16, still on bed, and you have to be in church by 9.15 to start up Habasco. But as God we have it. That 8.16, I picked up my head again. It was better than what it was. So I give God the honor and the glory for Amen. healing mercies. And I pray that he perfect the healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. I am very privileged that I can be amongst my brothers and sisters today. I am um, new to Houston and to America. I'm originally from South Africa. And um, I have been to another church, which was a um, Filipino church. And I come here, it's my second church, and I see God has people all over the world. Amen. And we are an international or universal church. Wherever we go, we'll find an Adventist church. So I'm happy to be here and to be amongst each one of you, and um, I hope that uh, we'll have opportunities to meet and interact, yes. and um, may God bless us on the Sabbath day. Amen. My God is able, he's able, I know he's able. I know my God is able to carry me through. Let's sing like as if I, like those who their God is able. My God is able. He's able. I know He's able. I know my God is able to carry me through. For He has healed a broken heart. He has set the captives free. He raised the dead, can raise the dead, and he walked upon the sea. My Lord is able, he's able. I know he's 
able. I know my God is able to carry me through. Amen. When I started this, I said, mine is special, right? And if you know why I said mine is special, then mine is special. And we all are special in God's eyes. God fought two battles for me in two days. (laughs) Remember I started with, our culture reminds us of the Sabbath. The devil tried to steal that which God has restored for me at work. The devil thought he could take away my Sabbath off. He thought he could make me to work on the day that I have not worked on for how many years. But God said, what? No. My daughter, you're not going to work on the Sabbath day. These people are only fighting in vain. They ganged up against, tried to prove all the evidences, but their evidence failed. And when I was leaving work, one of them said, you're leaving at four again on a Friday? I'm like, yes, ma'am. And that's going to continue to be my answer. Because I'll continue to leave at four every Friday, and they're not going to be seeing me until Sunday. Yes, no matter. And that is one trial and tribulation that I know that most of us as Adventists face. But the difficult part is the fact that most of us are not bold enough to stand and fight for that which the law has given us. People are going to rise up against us and want to take that day off. Some are going to come to you, eh, but you're not the only Adventist. Other Adventists are doing it. Other Adventists are doing it does not mean Amrachi should do it. I am Amrachi. I know why I'm a seventh Adventist. We might go to the same church does not mean that we believe in the same thing. As we all are sitting here does not mean that we all believe the same thing. Some are just here as bench warmers. Yep. But if you know what you truly believe and who you truly believe in, then you should be ready to stand up and fight. Because when you fight, God will back you up. Then my second testimony is, many a times we walk into the doctor's office. We drive ourselves to the doctor's office. Nothing wrong with us. Not even a scratch, not even like even headache. And then the devil will say, no, it is time for me to make an attempt on your life. And the devil would make an attempt so bad that everything would look like as if that's your end. But when God says it's not yet your time, you will have that peace. That peace that even the doctors would be like. She looks so relaxed. (laughs) I walked into a doctor's appointment on Friday. No single headache, drove one hour plus to, to, to see a specialist. Nothing, I was completely fine, and the devil thought it was time for him to make an attempt. But he that is in me was stronger than he that was in him. For three good hours, a machine was breathing for me, someone that walked to her, into her, into doctor's office herself. The devil made an attempt in, on my life on a Friday for that matter. But the God of the Sabbath, the God in whom we serve, knew that it was not the time for his daughter to go. And just at the time, the devil thought it was time for him to finish work. God restored me back to life. After three hours of not breathing on my own. And when I woke up, first thing I said is, what am I doing here? I thought I drove myself. I didn't want to go home. They were like, if you know what just happened to you, you will not be talking about going home. Many of you are wondering, and you're still here. Yes, I am still here. I only agreed for them to keep me one night, and I told them, you know what? My daddy needs me. My family needs me. I need to be with my family. The doctor was like, you know, I see you're a stubborn person. I was like, yes, I'm stubborn, because my spirit told me that I don't belong there. And that was how God brought me back to life, and I'm standing on my feet. 
And when Sister Forma called me, the song that I told her on that Sabbath morning when I was waiting for my discharges, it is well with my soul. When peace like a river attended our way, when sorrows like seas billows roll, whatever my Lord that has taught me to say, it is well. Make that your song every day. Because no matter what the devil tries, and while I was there, I was like telling God, the devil might slay me, but yet will I trust him. Just like Job said, though you slay me, yet will I trust him. And when you have that strong faith, the devil cannot shake you. There is nothing that can touch you. At this time, I'm going to call on the only matches to, um, to do their family song, after which we'll all rise up and sing um, our closing hymn, the only matches. of the earth, balances of the earth, balances of the earth, the wondrous work of him, which is perfect in knowledge, perfect in knowledge, does thou know, does thou know the balances of the earth, balances of the earth. Balances of the earth, the wondrous works of him, which is perfect in knowledge, perfect in knowledge, does I know. Happy Sabbath once again, everyone. Um, today, we want to use this as a family song when the role is called of yonder. Will you be there? I want to be there. I want to be there. So I believe that all of us, our desire is to be there. Let us sing. Don't mind our voices, but just speak up the words. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. When the running taking drum bright and fray, when the saints of the star over all the other sun, and the roll is called up yonder out the day. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there on the bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise in the glory of his resurrection share when his choosing shall gather to their home beyond the sky, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Lay the slave before the master from the dawn to Satan's son. Lay the stock of all his love and love and share. When and all of life is over and the walk on earth is done. And the roll is called up yonder all the day. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. Amen. 
rise for the closing hymn. Him. Before the closing hymn, I just have a few announcements. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone for making it to Sabbath school today. Next Sabbath, I believe that we'll be able to get here on time and do better. So for next Sabbath, the family um, that will be leading out in Sabbath school would be the Afolabi family. And on the 27th will be the Fatoki family. So thank you, everyone. You have made our work as um, the Sabbath school crew um, pretty much easier by being able to help. And we can really tell the difference that Sabbath school now looks better and fuller each time. So please, let's continue to support the Sabbath school team. Thank you. Thank you. Let's rise for the closing hymn, hymn number 321. My Jesus, I love thee. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the follies of sin, I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior, thou art mine. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, it is this period. Thank you, most gracious Father in heaven, for this day, the Holy Sabbath day. Thank you for giving us this day to rest from all our labors, to rest from all our trials, to rest from all our tribulations, to rest from all the bustlings and uh, hustles of the week. Father, Lord, as we have gathered here this morning to worship you, help us to worship you in truth and in spirit. 
Father, dear Lord, help us to receive that blessing of the Sabbath and help us to know how to call this day a delight to our soul. Father, dear Lord, that when we do all this in this word, when you will come, it will not be a new thing for us to rest on your Sabbath day in that home you have prepared for us. Our prayer is that when the role is called up yonder, Father, help us to answer, here am I, Lord, we have been waiting for you. May this be our prayer, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Sabbath school is at John. Bom dia a todos, bem-vindo a Houston International, estamos muito felizes de vocês estarem aqui participando com a gente hoje, tenham um bom dia. Amém. Bom dia e feliz sábado, Senhor lhe bendiga, desde de aqui, desde Houston International, a igreja de Houston International, uma cordial bem-vinda a cada um de vocês, sejam muito bem-vindos à casa do Senhor nesta manhã. Dobro horanco! Наші любі брати та сестри, а також наші гості. Ми церков, інтернаціональна церков Адвентисті сьомого дня вітає вас тут, на цьому святому благословенному Богу місці, в цей благословенний святий день. Now welcome to Nigeria. Welcome from South. Your bad people are Cabo. Okay. In the Igbo, in Arabia, okay. <laughs> we greet you now, now welcome. We are pleased to join us this morning. Now, Eastern International SD Church on our day. Now, welcome to this International Day. Oh, I want to welcome you, Nikki Rwanda, from East Africa. Murakazaneza. When we greet in the good morning, we say, Mwara Mutse, join me for Swahili. Sabato Njema. Sabato Njema. I think that's the language now. We are, are doing a riyasa to God's heaven. Happy Sabbath. That's the Swahili language from uh, Eastern Africa. Sabato Njema. Sabato Njema. Sabato Njema. Happy Sabbath. So you can repeat the same thing. Sabaton Jema, Sabaton Jema. Karibu. Welcome. Welcome. Asante. Happy Sabbath. Karibu ne karibu sana. As a Honduran and Garifu in Honduras, I will say to you, Buiti Samudi. We will have in English now. Good morning, church. Welcome to International Day. One God, many nations. I have a question. Has anyone understood what has just been said this morning? Good job. I'm sure this will come as a shock to you all, but I'm here as a representative of England. You, you may have guessed that I'm not from these parts, and this is my melting pot. All my comments are based on equality and fairness as an observation and not a criticism. 
I'm a greeter for this church, along with my brother, Herman Ogote, who's just disappeared. Most of you know us, and our task must be handled with tact and diplomacy. Last Sabbath, Sister Tanya, who can be, I must add, very persuasive, used her influence and asked me to perform this oratory before you all. I cannot flail from this task, so I have to tell you, there was a day when England ruled the world, economically, politically, and militarily. Today, England has nestled itself in tranquility, quietly surrounded by like-minded countries in Europe, helping each other to stay safe and united. When I was asked to prepare a greeting for this special day, I was surprised, but I would not scoff at such a request. I thought long and hard about what I should wear. You might think that this is strange for a bloke, but just look around you at my brothers and sisters and you'll see what they're wearing. Why should I worry? The way we dress is mostly driven by the climatic conditions in the countries from whence we have lived before coming to America. I have been told that the way I dress makes me look very English. Now there's a surprise. <laughs> Excuse me. Where did I get to? And I take it as a compliment. As an Englishman, I have always shown respect to whomever I have become acquainted, and have always been colorblind, and I do not and I do not use those words medically. I want to say that the English language is what ties the world together. England has dominated many countries with speech, sports, and customs. In respect to food, the English diet might be considered by many to be boring and tasteless. But something special this way comes. Where am I now? Let me say, if you haven't tried steak and kidney pie with potatoes, veggies, and gravy, or fried fish and chips wrapped in newspaper doused with salt and vinegar, you are missing so much. And this, for an, ap an aperitif, there is always strawberry cider. This has to be compared to the exotic and spicy delights found in many countries of our members and visitors here before you. If and when we get to heaven, God will make us all feel very comfortable and welcome. This is Christian fellowship, motivated by his love. We cannot allow division to disrupt our unity. It is remarkable that ordinary people from all around the world are drawn here together in search of his love and compassion. To close, I know this service is a blessing for us all. It is not a coincidence that our church, being represented by more than 30 nations, is why it is called Houston International. Thank you. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Yes, it is International Day, the much talked about International Day, and I want to welcome you all to uh, this program. Um, I want to let you, you know, reflect on what the significance of this program is. You know, though we are diverse in language and culture, but we are united in purpose, and, you know, God be praised for that. Uh, as you, you know, as you have already known, it's international. 
uh, day, and uh, we have International Fellowship Lunch today, so please uh, feel free to enjoy the intercontinental dishes, right? Uh, visit food tables, tastes from different, uh, different international delicacies, and you will enjoy it. I pray the Lord will bless us as we do in Jesus' name. Uh, so I have a few more announcements, uh, but before I go, I have, I have a, a disclaimer. You see, what I'm wearing is not, is not a pajamas, neither is it a parachute, okay? In, in, in Nigeria, we call this Agbada, all right? And then, or you can call it 1,500. 1,500. We thank God for that. Let us say a quick prayer before the announcement. Father Lord, as we go ahead in this program, I pray that you please be with us. I pray that your Holy Spirit will dwell richly in our midst. And at the end of it, Lord, let us all be blessed. For I have prayed in Jesus' name. So tomorrow, who can remind me what starts tomorrow? Evangelistic series, right? It's finally here. We will be, we've been talking about it Sabbath after Sabbath. It's here. So tomorrow, April 14th, and this program will run through April 28th, right? 7 p.m. every night, except Thursday. So please... The success of this program depends on you. You know, God is depending on each and every one of us to talk to our neighbors, our friends about this program. And it's, it's a program that's very important, you know, for everyone, even members of uh, our church. So please, uh, let's invite others. It, it's, it's, the theme is take charge of your health. Take charge of your health. You agree with me, a lot of people are going through health challenges. And they need your help to lead them to, you know, what they can do to uh, get a better health. Uh, and the speaker, as you are already aware, is uh, Brother Dwayne and Alexander, and Sister Alexander uh, Lemon. So please, please. Please invite your friends, invite your neighbors, because this program promises to be uh, uh, to be a blessing unto everyone. Uh, also, there is going to be an upcoming uh, exciting mission trip to Kenya. We've talked about it. This program is from July 7th to 16th. If you want to explore the beautiful city or the beautiful country of Kenya, uh, be part of this mission. But more importantly, if you want to spread the gospel, if you want to be part of the uh, people who will be spreading the gospel in Kenya, please uh, reach out to Sister Muja. Uh, her phone number is 862 uh, Please reach out to her, and she would give you more information on that. And I want you to also lift uh, Sister Muja and Brother Laune in, uh, in prayer. Keep them in prayer as they expect their bundle of joy that God will throw out all the plans of the enemy. Please continue to pray for them. Uh, they are not here to, uh, this, this hour, but please put them in prayer, please. And main ministry tomorrow is another uh, prayer session uh, online. Uh, please endeavor to join. It's at 6.30 a.m. And then in regards to the Sabbath afternoon Bible study, we'll uh, announce the plans we have for uh, this uh, particular program after the evangelistic series. So please stay tuned for that. At this time, I want to invite Elder Dapo and uh, Sister Toy to give us an uh, announcement on family ministry. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, church. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Um, real quick, we have an announcement uh, for family ministry. Can you please display the flyer we have up there? Um, one club is back. 
for those of us, many of us, some of us may not know what one club is. It's a club where we have couples meet together and study different materials that help us build on our marriages. Now, we're going to start this series. We have six session series. My wife is going to talk about them. And this time around, we're going to be studying um, Mad About Marriage. It's by uh, Mike and Gail Tucker. And the topic is flipping the switch from just plainly mad to madly in love. That is our prayer for each and every couple here. And this is open to everyone. You know, if your, your husband isn't here, okay, she has something to say. <laughs> and so in terms of the logistics, this is open to everyone. You know, if your spouse is not in the country, this is for you. Say, hey, can we... Can you plan to be on the phone and listen in and, and plan to discuss it? But let's say they're not able to call in at that time. You can still come, receive the information, and then schedule time with your spouse who may be overseas to go over the material. So we want to make sure that everyone knows that you are invited and you're included. There are six sessions um, for this particular series. And if you scan, you can even bring out your phone. This is the only time. Bring out your phone, scan so you can get to the registration link. And the meetings are going to be held either on Saturday evenings or Sunday. Um, depending on who all registers and what times are selected, we'll, we'll finalize the date. But they will be on Saturday evening or Sunday mornings. And we will be starting in May. Registration does close on April 26th. So we want as many couples to register as possible. And to also say those who are in, on, the, on the cusp of getting married, who are engaged, about to be married, this is for you as well. So you can come and learn as much as possible. Don't feel left, left out. It is free. So come and learn. Let us reason together. Let us rub minds together. And the Lord will continue to bless each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Family Ministry. And finally, I want to call on Sister Charity um, to give us information on the VBS. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. Welcome to this beautiful international day. Everybody are shining like international people. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, finally our VBS is here. Vacation Bible School. To God be the glory. It's for your children. This year topic, one of the key verses, key point is, I've given a new rule. I don't know what that new rule is. We are coming to study that rule, that new rule which Jesus is giving to each and every one of us, it is love one another. And I'm so glad it's during their holiday time. They got to have time to invite their neighbors, their students to come and study. I know most of the times that the um, parents will drop them here and leave. This time, it involves all of you. Jesus is telling us that he loves us. Always do what? Relax. He accepts us. Always relax. He values us. Always relax. We can't drop them and leave. Just please relax with each and every one of us. Let's study together. We'll be looking forward with your donations and uh, you are support in everything. May God bless you. I just pray that they will play the music. They'll be singing. The promo video. Do they have it? Okay, if they don't have it, it's just saying. Jesus is always with me. Jesus is always with us. So let's come together and study. The, 
the date uh, we pick is um, June. It's starting from June 23rd through 27. Please don't fail to register. May God bless us as we come. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Charity. I will now invite Pastor Jones to um, welcome us and have a pastoral emphasis. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord on his holy day. Praise the Lord. C celebrating International Day. The Bible says, John says, I saw a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues. They stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Amen. Amen. And they cried, salvation to our God, which sits on the throne and to the lamb. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so in heaven, there will be na most na nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues standing before the throne. Amen. Amen. Praising God. And so we thank God for this day that represents what it's going to be like in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. I want to first give a, a welcome to our visiting friends and family. We got any visitors here this morning. Want to recognize you. Any visitors, first time visitors, want to recognize you. Want to invite you to stand. Um, want to invite you to stand today so that we can recognize you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 If you want to say a few words, want to invite you to do that. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, my name is Valerie Royal Curtis. I'm a member of the Shallow Seventh-day Adventist Church in Little Rock, Arkansas. I am the Bible worker for the church. Um, I'm just out visiting here in the Houston area. And at the moment, I'm in the process of moving. Uh, and I'm looking for a church home. And I have been um, following you all for a moment now, over, you know, and I'm very um, interested in coming joining you all's church and bringing my family and also uh, showing you all uh, what I do. I go out in the public and bring in people, so I would love to work with you all just going and bringing in. Amen. So, yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Uh, I'm not a first-time visitor here. Uh, <laughs> I am an elder of the New Life Church under the direction of Pastor Edson Joseph. Uh, I'm also involved in a lot of different activities. Uh, the young lady just spoke a while ago, talk about uh, Kenya, which uh, uh, since last year, I'm trying to put something together uh, with uh, Elder Enoch Akama uh, to go provide some uh, clean water uh, for the children of Kenya. I am originally from Haiti. When I walked in here, the first text I did, I looked for the flag, for the Haiti flag, uh, is not there. So is there is any shen is coming? Okay, okay, okay. Pray for Haiti. Haiti is the first black republic independent in the world. Haiti at one time was the pearl of the Antilles. And Haiti played a big role with Africa. So you all probably see in the news and what's going on in Haiti at this time. But with prayer, nothing is impossible. Yeah. Haiti will come back again. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Sabbath, brethren. I believe I could say brethren, and um, thank you for the privilege of being here, both my wife and I, and to yes. celebrate the International Day. Yes. Oh, originally, I'm from the island of Trinidad, and my wife is from South Africa. Yes. So, Amen. We, Amen. We do have that mix, as the brother was saying, he didn't see his flag, but I can see mine. Yes. <laughs> so, I want to thank God that we can be here to, to be amongst the brethren. I do feel that warmth. I want to give God all the praise and thanks. Yeah. 
Amen. Um, good morning, happy Sabbath. I have introduced myself earlier, but um, my name is Beverly. I am from Johannesburg, South Africa. And um, I'm really happy to be amongst all my brothers and sisters. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Muriel McCree. And I was invited here by Sister Margaret, a lovely lady who I met when I moved into the apartment building where she works. And she invited me here this morning. And I am really enjoying this. And I thank her very much for inviting me. I am originally from Jamaica, but I am stationed here now in Houston. And I thank you all. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We got some more. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everybody. I've been here for about six years in Houston, going on seven. And this is the first time I've come here. I was invited by my friends, you know, for the special day. Amen. Originally, I'm from Trinidad. Amen. And I'm, um, you know, happy to be here this morning to fellowship with you all. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you all for coming to visit us. We definitely glad you're here with us. I want to invite you to come back. Amen. And join us. Amen. Join us. Join us in the church here at the Houston International as we look forward to doing the Lord's work. Amen. Amen. Also want to let you know, um, again, going to emphasize this um, visitation. If you need a visitation, please see me or the elders. Amen. Or if you know somebody who you think is that need a visitation, somebody that you haven't seen in a while, and you said, Pastor, the elders, I want you to check on this person. Please let us know so that we can schedule that accordingly. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we want you to do that. We want you to do that. Let us know. Also, I uh, just want to let you know that um, as far as Christian education is concerned, it is, uh, it is enrollment time. If you want to enroll your children in the Katy Adventist Christian School, also in uh, Houston Adventist Academy, it is enrollment time. So if you want to make that happen, the time is now. And it's also it's good to do it early because there are scholarships that are available uh, that are on a first-come, first-served basis. So I want to invite you to do that. Also, again, want to reiterate, the revival starts tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Amen. Amen? Take charge of your health. Amen? Amen? God has given us one body. That's all we got. <laughs> Just one. We've got to take care of it so that we can do the work that God has assigned for us to do. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Also want to thank Pastor Walker. Amen? He's going to come and preach to us today, and we want to just give him preliminary thanks for coming apart to share a word with us today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Represented in our church at Abraham Houston International, the, co the continents and regions. Presenting, could you please stand as we present the flag of the United States of America? Please stand. And the Christian flag. States is a part of the North American Division. The North American Division is home to 1.2 million members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, worshiping in almost 5,700 churches. A part of the North American Division is the Division of Divisions, Inter-America Division. This division reports more than 3.5 million members attending nearly 15,000 churches. Division 
There are nearly 14,400 churches to serve the 2.5 million members in this region. of Africa, we have the East Central Africa Division, a made a population of about 307 million. The Seventh Day Adventist Church counts more than 4 million members, worshiping at more than 17,000 churches. West Central Africa reports nearly 87,000 members worshiping in almost 4,800 churches. Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division over 4.3 million members worshiping nearly 12,800 congregations across the territory. And in the Middle East and North Africa Union Mission, we have around 5,200 members worshiping in nearly 60 churches across the territory. In Asia, in the Northern Asia Pacific, there are nearly 320,000 members worshiping in more than 1,060 churches across the region. In Southern Asia, we have nearly 1.4 million members worshiping in more than 4,500 churches. In the Southern Asia Pacific, we have over 1.6 million members in more than 8,050 churches. In the Chinese Union, we have 472,000 Adventists worshiping in around 1,100 churches. In the Inter-European Division, we have 180,000 members who are worshiping in nearly 2,600 churches. In the Trans-European Division, we have close to 89,000 members who meet in nearly 1,200 churches. We have members in the Euro-Asia Division, we have members right now we have separated and it's, this union is directly under the general conference, the Ukrainian Union Conference. And those are members of our division and we have representation from all the different division here at the Houston International Church.
standing, we will have our intro. Holy, holy, holy. There is none like thee. You are God all by yourself. Today, as many nations, we come to lift you up. Tabernacle with us today, Lord, that every worshiper will see Jesus high and lifted up. I pray that you will abide with us here as we ascend praise to you in Jesus' name. I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now it's time for praise and worship. Please feel free to praise the Lord as we sing at this time. Uh, we will sing from different languages and just... Feel free to do the actions as we sing this after this morning. Sorry, happy Sabbath.
not searching.
opening song, song number 83, I'll worship the Lord. Let's all stand. come to the moment where we come together to pray together and also just to lift our burdens to the Lord. Also to be thankful for what God has done for us. I know it's a joyful Sabbath. It's a high Sabbath. We are grateful. We are joyful. And um, at least we have something to be thankful this morning. Amen. He has done it for me. He has done it for you. He has done for every one of us. We need to be thankful always. God is good all the time. All the time. At this time, there are a few requests that I want to mention. Our brother Steve Odima lost his sister back in England. When I, please, please, if you don't mind coming forward, and I'll invite pastors to hold him while we pray. And also, Sister Comfort Noigwe, who's living to Nigeria, please, I'll also invite you to come uh, forward. And also, let's remember our sister Muja, who is um, under observation at the hospital. Please, let's remember them. Also, the revival series that's coming, starting tomorrow, you're invited tomorrow at 7 p.m. Please, let's come out. And uh, our visitors, we are here to pray for you and also to show you love and welcome you back once again. And also to pray for our speaker. At this time, if you have a burden and or something you want to tell God, please feel free to come to the to the to the front. And um, if you able to kneel wherever you are, let's all kneel and pray together at this time.
Our most gracious Father in heaven, what a joy to be in your presence this morning. Father, we thank you so much for the gift of life. Father, we thank you for you are our God. We thank you for even sending your son to die for us, Father. This morning we come to you with thanksgiving. We came to you with the joy, Father, from many nations we've gathered here this morning to celebrate and also to just take a test how heaven is going to be like, Father. We thank you, Father, for this moment and always for bringing us together. Father, please bind us together with your love. We thank you, Father, for all that has been planned for today. We just want to present every moment for your all glory, honor and glory, Father. Father, we thank you, Father, for you've, uh, we've gone uh, through some planning throughout the week, but it's because of you, but you made it possible that this all has come to uh, this moment, Father. We just want to give you honor and glory for everything, Father. Father, thank you so much for even our visitors you brought to come and fellowship with us this morning. Father, we're grateful, Father, for bringing them. It's a joy when you have a visitor at home, Father. We thank you, Father, for even those that are watching us online. Father, we thank you for their moment. Father, let, their, let us be reminded that, Father, you are always there wherever we are. And wherever we put our thoughts to you, you are always there with, for us, Father. Father, this morning, um, a side petition for your children. Father, is, if anything that will prevent from this prayer not to be heard, Father, ask for forgiveness, starting with me. Father, may you forgive us our sins. May you cleanse us. May you bring us to your feet as your children are all from all nations, Father. We thank you, Father, for even uh, for our sister Comfort. who will be traveling back to Nigeria. This moment, we want to lift her in a special way. Father, thank you for the moment she's been with, her, with us here as a family. And we just want to pray a special prayer for her. She's traveling. And also, Father, may you take her safely. You reunite her with the family. And when the time is right again to come back, Father, we thank you. And your name will be praised, Father. This morning, we also want to remember our brother Steve Odima, who lost his uh, sister in England. Father, may you give him comfort. May you surround him with your love. May you uh, be with the entire family, Father, during this time of grief, Father. Father, I use him as a point of contact for so many others who have lost loved ones, Father. May you visit each and every home. May you visit each and every individual, family, wherever they are, Father. Please bring comfort and peace to their hearts, Father. We want to thank you, Father, even for our sister Muja, who is uh, at the hospital right now under observation. Father, please visit her at the hospital. And Father, we use her as well as a point of contact for all those in the hospitals, those who are at home, wherever they are. Father, please visit each and every member, Father, and our friends, Father, for a special healing for, in their bodies, Father. Father, we want to thank you, Father, for the revival series that is about to start tomorrow. Father, we invite your presence, we invite your Holy Spirit. Even the guest speaker that is traveling tomorrow, please give him journey mercies, Father. Use him in a mighty way, Father. We invite the community, Father. Please bring people from the community to come and listen to your message, Father. We thank you, Father, for you know we will do it when we ask in your name. You always do it, Father. We thank you, Father, for even our visitors among us this morning. Father, please be with them as they enjoy this day. They have been blessed. By the time they live here, they know they really worship a true God. We thank you, Father, for even the speaker for the hour for today. Pastor Walker, Father, please use him in a mighty way. Father, hide him behind the cross. Use him, Father. Please, let someone be touched here this morning through him. Father, please be with us in the rest of the day. And remind us to always keep the Sabbath and always to know that you are there with us all throughout the day. We thank you. We love you. We thanksgiving. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Inviting all our boys and girls for children's story time. This 
is the Lord's church, and Jesus is the Lord. This is the church that God established by His word. This is the church that God has made. The gates of hell shall not prevail. This is the Lord's church, and Jesus is the Lord. This is the Lord's church, and Jesus is the Lord. This is the church that God has established by His word. This is the church that God has made. The gates of hell shall not prevail. This is the Lord's church, and Jesus is Lord. This is the Lord's church, and Jesus is Lord. This is the church that God has established by His word. This is the church that God has made. The gates of hell shall not prevail. This is the Lord's church, and Jesus is Lord. This is the Lord's church, and Jesus is Lord. This is the church that God has established by His word. This is the church that God has made. The gates of hell shall not prevail. This is the Lord's church, and Jesus is Lord. Let's join hands and show we love each other. Let's join hands and show how much we care. Young and old, we work with one another for this church which we hold so dear. Let us raise all voices with thanksgiving for the many blessings which have come our way. Let's join hands and praise the Lord together on International Day. Good morning, children. Happy Sabbath. How many times have you heard Happy Sabbath for the day? A lot of times. Do you know why we say Happy Sabbath? Because this is the day that God rested. Because this is the Sabbath day. Yes, it's the Sabbath day, and God calls the Sabbath day a delight. So when I say happy Sabbath to you, I want you to love this day and feel really happy on this day. So boys and girls, for our story today, it's coming from a book in the Bible. And do we have any adventurers here? Let me, keep your hands up if you participated in the Adventurous Bible game. Great. So do you know which book we are studying this year? Exodus. Exodus. Very good. So our story is coming from the book of Exodus. Do we know who's a slave? Someone who works with people. Someone who works with people? Uh, someone that works for someone um, under um, force. Yes. The one that Pharaoh always tortures them and does not let them do anything and always makes them work. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Slaves. So slaves are the, that when like people like, so the Pharaoh tells them what to do. Yes, so a slave is a person that someone else forces to do something. They force them to obey him, obey them. And so in our story, we have the children of Israel, and the children of Israel were God's special people. And they were slaves in Egypt for how long? Do you know how long they were slaves in Egypt for? 140? I think it's 1,000 years. Oh, 4,000 something. 
It's three or four. They were actually in each of us slaves for 430 years. Was that a long time to be a slave? Yeah, that was a really long time to be a slave. But something happened. God, through Moses, decided to free the Israelites. He didn't want them to be slaves anymore. And because they lived in Egypt, which was a home that was not their home, God wanted to lead them to a new home called the Promised Land. Do you think they were excited to leave Egypt to go to a new home? Would you be excited? Yes. So God, through Moses, led them out of Egypt. And so they were walking through the desert, all the wilderness, and they were excited at first, but then they got tired of walking. They got tired of walking and walking. They even got tired of the food that God gave them. They wanted to return back to Egypt. They wanted to return back to slaves. And Moses didn't understand why these people were complaining all the time. But anyway, God still loved them and God still provided for them. And as they were walking to the promised land, because they got tired, they needed to rest. And so they came to a place called Rephidim. Can you say Rephidim? Yes, and Rephidim means resting place. But the thing was, they didn't get to rest very long because the Amalekites came to fight them. And so the people, they've never been in a fight before. They've never been in a war before. And here comes these people who want to pick a fight. So Moses had to come up with a plan really, really fast. So the plan Moses came up with, he called Joshua. Remember Joshua who fought in the battle of Jericho? He called Joshua and he told Joshua, Joshua, I want you to gather some men and I want you to go and fight against the Amalekites. And Joshua was very brave because, and he didn't complain even though he didn't have any fighting experience and he knew his men didn't have any fighting experience. He did as Moses wanted him to do. And so Moses, while Joshua went to gather his men, Moses went up to the mountain and Moses took with him his brother Aaron and took with him a friend Hur. And when Moses went up into the top of the mountain, you saw those flags you came in with? Moses had a staff in his hand. And so Moses lifted up the staff high, just like you held that flag up high. Moses held that flag high. Let me see your hands if you brought in a flag. Were your hands tired? Do you think you could hold that flag up for the whole day? <laughs> well, Moses held up his, that, his, his rod, but most, and so Moses' hand got really tired because he was holding it for one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, and his hand got really tired. And when Moses lowered his hand, something was happening in the battlefield. The Israelites were losing the battle. So Aaron, who was with Moses, and her, who was with Moses, they knew they had to do something to help. They cannot just watch Israel lose. So they decided to get a big stone, and they let Moses sit down on the stone, and they both stand on one side of each other. If we could put that picture on the screen. And they held up Moses' hand. And so, boys and girls, you see the picture? That's Aaron and that's her helping Moses hold up the hand while Joshua and the men fought in the battle. And they were able to win that battle. And because God was good to them, Moses decided to build an altar and to make a sacrifice and to praise the name of the Lord. And Moses called that place Jehovah Nissi. Can you say that? Jehovah Do you know what Jehovah Nissi means? It means the Lord is my banner. Can you say that? The Lord is my banner. The Lord is my banner. And God told Moses something. God told Moses to write what happened down and give it to Joshua because God knew that Joshua had many battles to fight. And those words are for us today, boys and girls, because we have many battles to fight. And God wants all of us to know that he is our banner. And he being our banner means that he is our help. 
He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is our strong tower. Whatever battles we all face, because we're all going to face some battles, boys and girls. As you grow and you get older, remember, the Lord is your banner. The Lord is your help. And boys and girls, we're also fighting. We fight an enemy. And the enemy wants us to return back to Egypt. He wants us to return to sin. And I'll always, when we give our hearts to Jesus, he wants us to go back. And the, the Israelites, all they wanted was good food. Imagine that. They were willing to become slaves just for food. So, boys and girls, I want you to remember as you grow, remember that the Lord is your banner. Amen. So, we want to end our children's story there before the children go back to the seats. The children have a special song they're going to sing for you. And so we ask all the boys and girls to stand. Yes. And some of our kids have actions. So we want our kids to do the actions. Those who have the actions, can you come in front? Those who know the actions, can you come in front? If you know the actions of the song, no, you can. The Lord is mine and I am his, his banner over me is love. The Lord is mine and I am his, is mine and I am his love. His banner over me is love. He brought to his banqueting table, his banner over me is love. He brought me to his banqueting table, his banner over me is love. He brought me to his banqueting table, his banner over me is love. To heavenly pleasures, his banner over me is love. He lifted me up into heavenly pleasures, his banner over me is love. He lifted me up into heavenly places, his banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. He
boys and girls, thank you so much. You may go to your seats. Amen. It's beautiful to see our children all around this temple. I pray that day when Jesus comes that all of us be around his temple. All right. At this time, I will invite the church because it's a time to worship and tithes and offering. I invite the deacons to come forward, please. Our loose offering this week goes toward the Hope Channel. Uh, I want to read something very impacting while the deacons uh, recollect the tithes and offering. The impact of, a, of Hope Channel is evident in his inspiring stories of uh, God children, like Pastor, like Pastor Ross and Baby. Aurora, Pastor Ross, before he discovered the Adventism, he was addicted to drug. But watching the hope, he became Adventist. And uh, started program at, uh, through the program of a Bible study. He became Adventist, as I say. And right now, every year, 300,000 people goes, watch the channel, and through Bible study. So the impact of the little loose offering that we collect in this church, as individual church does around the country, around the world, to help the channels go to the expenses of those programs. Uh, Jesus is coming soon. It's earth that we can hold on to. Let's lay ourselves treasure in heaven where the feet, no rust, no mud gets in. So let's support the programs of our church because that's the only hope we got. We don't have nothing else to lean on because whatever we have in this earth, you will stay here, you will finish right here. The Lord is coming and everything in this earth will be consumed. The Lord is coming. When he said, lay not treasure for yourself on earth, but lay treasure in heaven, let's always look up because he is coming soon. So watch where you put your dollars at. Lay your treasure. Jesus is coming. The programs of our church, like 3ABN, and I want to, I want to testify to something. And just today I turned my box to the cable company. I thought I wasn't going to be able to watch the program that I watched in 3 a.m. When I turned the television on, the first program I see, it was 3 a.m. without a cable. <laughs> That's how God worked. And I was able to, you and me and my wife was able to watch the uh, top school uh, study one hour before we go to bed. Let us rise. All the treasures into the storehouse.
Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for another week. We thank you for providing for us and our family. We thank you for the roof over our head. We thank you for the bread on our table. We thank you for life. Father, there's nothing that comes from us. All comes from you. Now, Lord, we bless these tithes and offering. May they go forward to the world to hurry the step of our Lord coming. May you come soon, O Lord, take us away from this sinful world. And may you watch us. May you cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Bless those who are able to give today. And those who are un unable to give, provide for them. And may they recognize that you are the sole giver in all our existence. Bless us now, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. My special music today is coming from Luzu Brazilian Church. Mariana will be the singer, and Michelle is the pianist. I want to thank you then to come and celebrate with us. And some of my Brazilian friends over there who came to. <laughs> Happy Sabbath, church. It's a pleasure to be here. It's not my first time. I think two years ago, I came here for the first time when I moved to Houston. And it's a pleasure to be, to be here singing for you guys. This is Michelle. And today, we are going to share two songs that are very special to us and talk about the, the ways that we can trust in God and about his goodness. So I hope you can feel in your heart the presence of God this morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Yeah, check. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in a fire, time after time. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood, and what He did for me on Calvary is more than enough. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail.
sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust thee. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord. the goodness of God. Do you believe that God is good? Do you believe that he has led you through and led you here and will continue leading you? So if you know this song, you sing with us. Your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay sing my you. hands Oh, I will sing Of the goodness Your 
goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. When my life lay down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running. Scripture reading uh, is going to take a, a different form today. We're going to read in different languages. So if you have been selected to read the, you know, scripture, please come forward. Sabbath. Please stand for scripture read, please, church. Um, I'm reading Portuguese for John uh, chapter 17, uh, verse 14 to 23. Eu lhes tenho dado a tua palavra, e o mundo os odiou, porque eles não são do mundo, porque também eu não sou. Não peço que os tires do mundo, e sim que os guarde do mal. Eles são, não são do mundo, como também eu não sou. Santifico-os na verdade, a tua palavra é a verdade. Assim como tu me enviaste ao mundo, também eu enviei ao mundo. E a palavra deles, eu, eu me santifico a mim mesmo, para que eles também sejam santificados na verdade. Não rogo somente por estes, mas também por aqueles que vivem, é, por aqueles que vierem a crer em mim, porque, entre meio da tua palavra, a fim de que todos sejam uns, e como és tu, ó Pai, em mim e eu em ti, também sejam eles em, em nós, para que o mundo creia que tu me enviaste. Eu lhes tenho transmitido a glória que me tens dado, para que sejam como nós o somos, e neles eu em ti, 
e a fim de que sejam aperfeiçoados na unidade para que o mundo conheça que tu me enviaste e os amaste, como também amaste a mim. Amém. 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 Is it the same? John chapter 17, verse 14 to 23. Yo les he dado tu palabra y el mundo los aborreció, porque no son del mundo, como tampoco yo soy del mundo. No ruego que los quites del mundo, sino que los guardes del mal. No son del mundo, como tampoco yo soy del mundo. Santifícalos en tu verdad, tu palabra es verdad. Como tú me enviaste al mundo, así yo los he enviado al mundo. Y por ellos yo me santifico a mí mismo, para que también ellos sean santificados en la verdad. Y no ruego solamente por estos, sino también por los que han de creer en mí por la palabra de ellos. Para que todos sean uno, como tú, oh Padre, en mí y yo en ti. Que también ellos sean uno en nosotros, para que el mundo crea que tú me enviaste. Y la gloria que me diste, yo les he dado, para que sean uno, como nosotros somos uno. Yo en ellos y tú en mí, para que sean perfeccionados en uno y para que el mundo conozca que tú me enviaste y que los ha, has amado como también a mí me has amado. Amén. Amén. venir pour voir en français. <rire> Je les ai donné ta parole et le monde les a haïr parce qu'ils ne sont pas de ce monde comme moi je ne suis pas du monde. Je te prie par les hauteurs du monde mais de les préserver du mal. Ils ne sont pas du monde comme moi je ne suis pas du monde. Sanctifie-les par ta vérité. Ta parole est la vérité. Comme tu m'as envoyé dans le monde, je les ai aussi envoyés dans le monde. Et je me suis sanctifié moi-même pour eux enfin, que aussi soient sanctifiés par la vérité. Ce n'est pas pour eux seulement que je prie, mais encore pour ceux qui croient en moi par leur parole, afin, qu afin que tout soit en, 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 comme toi, Père, tu es en moi et comme je suis en toi afin que aussi soit un en nous, pour que le monde croit que tu m'as envoyé. Je les ai donné la gloire que tu m'as donnée, afin qu'ils soient un comme nous sommes un. Moi en eux et toi en moi, afin qu'ils ne soient parfaitement un. Et que le monde connaisse que tu m'as envoyé et que tu les as aimés comme tu m'as aimé. Amen. I'm Jeff. I represent uh, English-speaking countries. Um, so, United States, England, uh, and the other countries that speak English. So, we'll be reading out of John 17, verses 14 through 23. Um, I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible, the 1995 version. And this is Jesus praying to his Father. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. In your, in your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they themselves may also be sanctified in truth. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but, on, but for those also who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. The glory which you have given me, I have given them, 
that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be perfected in unity, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them, even as you have loved me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I have the privilege of introducing Pastor Walker this afternoon, and we praise God for his presence being with us today. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to read Pastor Walker's bio. Pastor Walker hails from the parish of Kingston, Jamaica, West Indies, but is now a resident in Katy, Texas. Uh, he is a senior pastor in the Texas Conference where he pastors two churches, Houston Phelan International and Sugarland Access SDA Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. If anybody in the house from Pastor Walker's Church, I should just raise your hand. Anybody in the house from Pastor Walker's Church? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. He holds a Bachelor of Arts in Pastoral Administration from the Northern Caribbean University and a Master's Degree in Pastoral Counseling and Psychology from Liberty University. Pastor Walker accepted the call to be a follower of Jesus in the year 1984 and has been actively involved in fulfilling the mission of the church and of Christ ever since. Being a natural leader and a servant of God, he has served the church in many capacities. Pastor Walker's passion is soul winning. As an evangelist, Pastor Walker has held evangelistic series both locally and abroad, leading over 2,200 souls to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Pastor Walker has been married to Sandra, the former Sandra Gordon, since September 28, 1986. She is a trained early childhood practitioner, having a bachelor's degree in early childhood and graduated from the Shortwood Teachers College and the University of West Indies. She has a passion for people and children. Together, they uh, parented five adult children, all of whom are active Seventh-day Adventist Christians. Amen. Pastor Walker's vision is to see himself, his family, and fellow brethren make it to the kingdom of heaven. Consequently, his philosophy is, as long as God lends me breath, I will praise him and with God's help bring others to him. If God has gotten, to, uh, gotten you to it, he will bring you through it. Amen? Um, he tries to accomplish this by ensuring whomever he meets is given an opportunity to learn and come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen? Pastor and Sister Walker works together in pastoral ministry, encouraging others to come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Again, they pastor the, Fe the Houston Phelam International and the Sugarland Access Church. His favorite Bible verse is Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Amen? Amen. Amen. After the song, the next voice you will hear is from Pastor Walker, who is coming to share a word with us today. Praise God. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Filled the boat with the doubt. The winds crushed the heart with fear. The lightning struck all the darkest corners where faith was still hiding. Faith was still hiding. The boat tossed all hope. Are you right 
Good afternoon. Wow. It's indeed a blessing to be here today. My wife and I, we are privileged to share in this year International Day. I should have been here before. But because of circumstances, I wasn't able to be here. But I'm thankful that the time has finally arrived. 
thanks to the invitation of Sister Tanya. And I want to thank your pastor, Pastor Jones, for his introduction. But I want you to know that we are just like you, children of God, marching to glory. I recognize that the time isn't working with us. Sometimes we wish we could put the time on hold so we do our thing, right? But the time has ran away. And some people are now thinking of their fellowship lunch. Especially considering the different menus that will be on today. Mm -hmm. It's another way of saying to me, Pastor, speak up and shut up. <laughs> but that's all right. <laughs> I intend to do that. Your theme, One God. Many nations. And I have captioned the message for today, stay in the ship. And I use as a backdrop for today's message, the book of Acts, chapter 27. Go with me in whatever version you may have or whatever gadget you may have. Allow me to read from good old King James. He still works, right? Yes. Let me read in your hearing. Verse 27 through to 32. But when the fourth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country and sounded and found it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it 15 fathom. Then, fearing lest we should fall, we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea on the color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, it cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. Except these abide in the ship, they cannot be saved. Stay in the ship. Pray with me. O oh Lord, allow me not to interfere with the message, but just to be the conduit that you will use to bring the message across. Speak, Lord. We're listening in Jesus' name. Because of time, I'm not able to go back to the start of this. But just to let you know that the Apostle Paul was coming close to the end of his life. He had done three missionary journeys. And now in Paul's life over the past two years, 
he was arrested. He was arrested by Roman soldiers in Jerusalem. Why? Because Jewish leaders had falsely accused him of inciting riots and showing disrespect towards the Jewish temple. They demanded that Paul be put to death. But Paul, being a Roman citizen, required Roman official to carefully follow the proceedings of Roman law and provide protection and a fair hearing for him. It's another way of demanding that, hey, you know how Americans are? I'm an American. You know my rights. Paul said, I'm Jewish, but I'm also a Roman citizen. And therefore, I need to answer to Caesar. Therefore, they couldn't touch him. They had to send him to Rome. Paul's young nephew overheard that the Jews were plotting to kill Paul. So he shared the information with Paul, who shared the information with the Roman commander. And therefore, they had soldiers protecting the man of God. They decided to set sail to Rome. Now, in those days, they did not have steam engine like we have today. Their travel from one place to the other on water depended highly upon the wave and the wind. So they set sail, led by a centurion who had soldiers under his command. They set sail, according to the commentator Hughes, in a vessel 140 feet long by 36 feet wide. They set sail, but uh, when you look at the history, the biblical history, you'll find out that the time that they set sail was not a good time. Because it was close, getting close to winter. They set sail, according to historical facts, round about October, going into November. Dangerous time to be on the water. And so, as they sailed along, they came to a certain island and Paul instructed them. Paul said, listen, let us winter here and after the winter, you can continue on to Rome. But he was just a prisoner. Eh? Who was going to listen to a prisoner? And so they continued. And lo and behold... Not taking Paul's advice was the wrong thing to do. Because out of nowhere, they encountered a storm. Mm -hmm. They encountered a storm that was about to wreck their lives. On board the ship, 276 passengers, including Paul, and they were experienced men. Paul, more so. He had traveled over 3,500 miles on water throughout his missionary journey. He knew it. He knew when storms would come. He could read the clouds. Paul was experienced in that area. So when he instructed them to stay put, he knew what he was saying. But as I said, they didn't listen. It is said that during that time, the dangerous season for sailing was between September 14 and November 11. They sailed, and then they encountered problems. The wind became boisterous. It was a storm. It was a serious storm. 
a storm that had the boat, the ship, uh, tossing to and fro on high seas. I don't know how many of you have ever been in a storm on the sea. It's the worst place to be. You are out of control and left to the elements. The storm raged. So much that even Paul was afraid. It raged. And you are wondering, but pastor, what does this have to do with all about International Day? Bear with me. Bear with me. It raged along. Just like some of us right now sitting here, we have our storm. We are dressed nicely in our garbs. Different nation, different ethnicity, different people, but we have storms. It may be cancer storm, pastor. It may be family storm. It may be financial storm. It may be wayward children storm. But we have all had our storms. But this preacher come by today to let you know that in spite of the storm, stay in the ship. Paul journeyed on. But he was afraid. Just like all the other 275 sailors were afraid. When you read the Acts of the Apostles, Ellen White tells us that they had no control over the ship. No longer could their compass work. They had to allow the ship to go where the elements took it. Bailing out water as they go along. They had to lower the tackle. The sail. It was terrible. But while, as I said, Paul being afraid like the other sailors, God was in the ship. Mm. It's one thing to have a storm. But being in a storm without God in your life, you're in serious trouble. God was in the ship. And the Bible tells us that the, the angel of the Lord gave Paul a dream and said, Hey, 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 fella, don't worry yourself. You ask to be in Rome, no matter what storm may rage, we are going to get you to Rome. Oh, my friends, my friends, my brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that though he, sh he slay me, Yet will I trust him. Or I know. I feel I'm going to preach today. I know. That my redeemer lives. Oh Job said. No worm may destroy this body. Oh praise God. Yet. In my flesh. I shall see God. I said stay in the ship. Don't lose hope. Stick with God. The, the, the Bible said that the storm raged. And as the storm raged, and the, those on board became fearful. So fearful that for 14 days they ate nothing. You know storm can do us that? Storm, situations in our lives cause us to lose our appetite. We don't want anything to eat because we are worried about the storm that we are faced. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that as they traveled along, after Paul got that dream, Paul was comfortable. 
so comfortable that after the 14 days, they saw him eating food. And they wonder why. He offered them some. He said, you can eat because in spite of what is happening, this ship may be destroyed, but no man's life will be taken. How do you know that, Paul? Oh, I'm glad you asked. He, he, he said, because last night, uh, God told me. God told you? Yes, the God who stepped out of nothing and said, let there be, and there was, he told me. The God who parted the Red Sea, he told me. The God who caused water to flow from a dead rock, he told me. The God who when his people were hungry, rained manna from heaven, he told me. He told me that, listen, Paul, no loss of life will take place here as long as they stay in the ship. Mm -hmm. Young people, can I talk to you? Uh, I, I know some of you don't like family worship. Uh, I, I know some of you don't even like to come to church nowadays. But, but I say to you, the best place for you is in the ship. Stay in the ship. There are some people who have, have gotten bigger now. They have gotten some money. And so God is not so much relevant to them. But I want to inspire you today. Stay in the ship. Marriage broken? Stay in the ship. Terminal disease, stay in the ship. Problem at work, stay in the ship. Financial instability, stay in the ship. Children out of church, stay in the ship. Problem at church, stay in the ship. The best, safest place for you to be is on board the ship of Zion. But I hear somebody saying, Pastor Walker, come on now. Too many hypocrites in the ship. Can I share with you what Sp Charles Spurgeon said? Spurgeon, one of the greatest preachers they say that ever lived, preached a sermon and was shaking people's hand at the door. And one worshiper walked up to him and said, Pastor Spurgeon, I'm glad for the message. You said that we should come on board. But I can't come on board because there are too many hypocrites in your church. Pastor Spurgeon, it is said, looked her in the eyes and said, Sister, there is room for one more. <laughs> I want you to understand. I want you to understand that we all have our criticism about God's church. But it is the safest place to be. If you don't believe me, ask Noah. The ark was the stinkest place for the antediluvian. But it was the safest place to be. Yes, we are not right in here. Yes, we, 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 we smell in here. Our behavior isn't good. But I want you to know this is God's church. The captain is still Jesus. The commander-in-chief of heaven is still in charge. So though this church may have its problem, Ellen White says this church militant will one of these days become the church triumphant. Stay on board. We'll all come together one of these days. Because Jesus is still in charge. Oh yes, he's still in charge. He's still the man for the hour. He's still the man for the job. So stay on board. Don't let go. I tell my brethren, ain't none of you going to get me out of God's church. Criticize me all you want. Talk behind me all you want. 
you ain't gonna get me out of God's church. Uh, if you want to come in, I will step, squeeze up beside you, but I ain't giving you my seat because I'm bound for glory, you see. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I onward brown. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. And somebody's saying, but pastor, you're not perfect. You're right. I ain't perfect. But guess what? I'm a work in progress. Oh, 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 oh. he ain't done with me yet. I need a little rubbing down here. If you ask Sandra, she will tell you. But listen, I'm pressing on. Nonetheless, stay on board. He's able He's more than able. I want you that to know that as you stay on board, God is going to take care of you. You know, there was a, a, it was an earthquake that happened, I think it might have been a year or a year and a half ago, in Turkey. Lasted for 45 seconds. Less than one minute. Over 47,000 people died. In 45 seconds, landlords became homeless. In 45 seconds, children became orphans. In 45 seconds, wives became widows. In 45 seconds, husbands became widowers. In 45 seconds, people were missing left, right, and center. Just 45 seconds. And some of you have been out of the ship for years. You are trusting on borrowed time. Friends, God didn't only put you in the ship like that. But he has given every single one of us on board a gift. And that gift is to minister to the church of God. A sister sing lovely a little while ago. But it ain't their gifts. God gave them to minister to the church. To edify the church. To lift up the church. What is your gift? Listen, Noah was a junk. But God used him. Abraham was old, but God used him. Isaac was a daydreamer, mm -hmm. but God used him. Jacob was a liar and a trickster, but God used him. Leah was ugly, but God used her. Joseph was an abused child, but God used him. Moses had a stutter, stuttering problem. But God used him. Gideon was afraid. But God used him. Samson had long ear and was a womanizer. But God used him. Rahab was a prostitute. But God used her. Jeremiah and Timothy were too young considered. But God used him. David, oh David had an affair. And was a murderer. But God used him. Elijah was suicidal, but God used him. Isaiah preached naked, but God used him. Jonah ran away. God went for him, brought him back, and used him. Naomi was a widow, but God used her. Job went bankrupt, but God used him. Peter denied Christ three times, but God used him. The disciples fell asleep while praying, but God used them. Martha worried about everything, but God used her. Mary Magdalene was promiscuous, but God used her. The Samaritan woman was divorced five times. And the man she now lived with wasn't, was somebody else's own, but God used him. Zacchaeus was too small, but God used him. 
Paul was too religious, but God used him. Timothy had ulcer, but God used him. And for heaven's sake, Lazarus was dead. God wake him up and use him. He can use you. He can use you. And that's why, as our text says in St. John, Jesus said, make them one. Make them one. Oneness of heart. Why? Because there is one God, although many nations. Jesus said, I in them and they in me, one. I enjoy the singing at praise and worship. Never understand one thing. But I enjoyed it because we are oneness of heart. And we are one people. Our language may differ. Our clothing may differ. Our lifestyle may be slightly different. But we are one in Jesus. Because Jesus is our Lord. And Jesus is our God. And Jesus is the one who is coming back for us. If you cut every one of us, you don't see Nigeria blood or Kenya blood or Jamaican blood or whichever blood. It is one blood. One red blood that run to all our veins. And therefore, we are brothers and sisters in the Lord. What makes us brothers and sisters? The blood of Jesus that was shed for all. The blood of Jesus has got united us together. And one of these days, he's going to come and he's going to put an end to sin. And he's going to say, Abide with me. In spite. Can you imagine heaven? It will be one universal language. Can you imagine heaven? As we speak about our experiences on earth. No wonder we need a thousand years. As we share with fellow Citizens of heaven, what it has been like on heaven, on earth, what it has been like as we grew up, what it was like when we were at Houston International, what it was like, we are going to tell the story of redemption. But my favorite part is what is captured in the songwriter's hymn that says, there is singing up in heaven such as we have never known. We are the angels joined together upon the Father's throne. There is singing and rejoicing and paraphrasing. I don't have the words here. But the part that sweet me is when they say, Holy, holy, holy is what the angels sing. And we saints expect to join them. When the courts of heaven ring. But. 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 When you see that conjunction. Stop. But. When we sing. Redemption story. They. They will fold their wings. For angels never know the joy that our salvation brings. Angels don't know what it is like for cancer to be rocking your body with pain. Angels don't know what it is like when you have the children college fee to pay and you don't have the money. Angel don't know what it is like when your loved one go to the grave and you leave the cemetery going back home without them. Angel don't know they will have to fold their wings as you lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. One God. 
many nations. As I close today, I want to close with this story. I want to close with this story. Horatio Stafford. Knew something about life. Unexpected challenges. He was a successful attorney. And real estate inventor, investor. Who lost a fortune. In the great Chicago fire of 1871. Around the same time. His beloved four year old son. The only boy of five children died of scarlet fever. So now he had lost millions and he had lost his only son. Thinking a vacation would do his family some good, he sent his wife and four daughters on a ship to England, planning to join them after he finished some pressing business at home. However, while crossing the Atlantic Ocean, the ship that his wife and daughter was in, along with 200 other passengers, was involved in a collision and it sunk. More than 200 people lost their lives. Including all four of Horatia Stafford's daughters. Yeah. Only his wife, Anna, survived the tragedy. Upon re arriving in England, Anna, his wife, sent a telegram to her husband that began by saying, Saved alone, what shall I do? Saved alone. Horatia immediately set sail for England. And at one point during his voyage, the captain of the ship that he was sailing on, aware of the tragedy that had struck the Horatia family, summoned Horatia to the deck, telling him that they are now passing over the spot where the shipwrecked had occurred. As Horatia thought about his daughters, Words of comfort and hope filled his heart. He did not curse God. He wrote them down, these words. And they have since been sung in churches across the globe. When peace, like a river, Attended my soul. When sorrow like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. I don't know what you're going through today. But I want you to know that if you are on board, don't leave. God is working out something in your life. One thing is sure, like he told Paul, don't worry yourself, I will get you to Rome. I'm saying to you today, a message from heaven, whatever you're going through, stay in the ship. God is going to get you to glory. If you are not on board, 
you're in trouble. If you were on board and you came off, find your way back on. The praise team comes as I make this appeal today. Stay in the ship. One God, many nations, stay in the ship. It is by staying in the ship that we will make it to heaven's eternal shore. But today, you have not yet come on board. Or, you were on board and you left. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you today. Because Jesus don't want to pass anybody. Come shake my hand. Give Jesus your heart. Make it a mindset that come hell or high waters. Whether you know that term or not. I'm going to stay in the ship. Or I'm going to get on board the ship. Because this ship can't sink. This ship is destined for glory. Today, I want to pray for you. Invite the church to stand. Come shake my hand. Come today. Give the preacher your hand and give Jesus your heart. Praise God, brother. Praise God. God be praised. Oh yes. Savior. Yeah, you call your men because you're strong. Hear my humble cry. Yes. Yes. While on others thou are calling. I see you men here. What up to the ladies? Oh. Do not pass me by. If the Spirit of God is speaking to your heart today, don't sit and stay right there in your seat. Come forward. We are recruiting. Find a sweet relief. Lean in there in deep contrition. We want you to stay on board. Because when the trumpet sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Oh, say, yes. How about our young people, our children? You need to make sure you're on board also. How about those up, up on the balcony? Jesus is calling. He's calling. He's calling. He's calling. He doesn't want to pass me none by. The last verse. Trust him only. More and life for thee. Is there somebody else? I said this ship is destined for Canaan happy shore. Captain Jesus is our pilot. And no matter what the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. But you got to be covered. Say, Oh yes. Say. While on others, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me.
with bowed head and closed eyes. Oh God, you are still God. Amidst what may be happening across this world, you are still in charge. Men may say all manner of things. But ain't it you who woke us up this morning? Ain't it you who is allowing us to breathe fresh air at this time? Without you, we can do nothing. And so today, Lord, your people have come forward asking or guaranteeing from you that there is a position on board the ship of Zion for them. Because like Paul said, only those who remain in the ship will be saved. And your word tells us that the trumpet will sound soon. The dead in Christ will rise first. And those that remain will be caught up to meet him in the air. Only those who have a ticket for glory. So today, Lord, search this altar. And for those persons who have not yet made their calling and election sure, Holy Spirit, prompt their heart, convict their lives so that they will say, Yes, Lord! So that you can give them a ticket. Because without a ticket, they cannot make it to the heavenly Canaan. Father, some of those of us who are on board the ship we have challenges, medical challenges, financial challenges, social challenges, family challenges. They are so far and wide, dear God. And today, on their behalf, I bring them before you with the challenges that they have. And I ask you, Lord, Savior. Hear my humble cry. Your people want to be saved in your kingdom. But some of these challenges are distracting them from worshiping the way that they should. Fix it, Lord. Fix it for somebody today. May they walk out of here confident that God got me. I thank you for your word. May somebody receive your word with gladness. And remind us that in spite of the many nations that we are represented here in this church and other places, you are one God, one Lord, and one Savior. Bless us and bless the closing exercise. In Jesus' name, amen. While we remain standing, our closing hymn is song number 
God is good, amen. I am I'm still excited, man. I'm excited. This is a good day in the, being in the house of the Lord, amen. Amen. We want to thank Pastor Walker for coming and sharing that word with us today. Praise the Lord. Stay in the ship. We want to invite Pastor Walker up. We have a gift from you from the community service and the International Day Committee. Just want to thank you for coming and sharing with us. Praise the Lord for your presence. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Just uh, two announcements. Lunch is going to be served outside in the tent. Amen. So everybody have their different tables, different nationality tables. So we praise God. Um, and then also immediately after lunch, come back to the sanctuary and we're going to have a musical concert. Amen. Amen. So everybody's invited. So we're feeding everybody. Everybody come back to the concert, right? Amen. 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 Let's bow our heads as we pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for your presence. We thank you for your blessing, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, God. And Lord, we thank you that we have come and celebrated together. And Father God, we pray in a special way, Lord, that we might stay in the ship. Because, Lord, you've called all nations, kindreds, and peoples, and tongues to be in the ship. Bless us, we pray. Keep us, we pray. And Lord, we also ask you bless us with the spiritual food. Father, we pray that you would bless the physical food and the hands that prepared it. Bless our fellowship together. And Lord, may we draw closer to you and closer to one another on this international day. We thank you in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen. 